Last year, I made a video explaining to Nigerians why they should buy gun, why they should license gun and have it legally in their possession. I made some remarks, especially considering the level of insecurity we have in our country. I explained the reason why people in Southern Kaduna should be able to have guns in their possession. I talked about this in to state that I experiencing killing, you know, mass killing for that matter, almost every three, three months. I said these people should be able to buy gun and license it and have it in their possession, at least to defend the little you could defend. Now I was criticized because of that video. A lot of people told me that I shouldn't encourage people to buy gun. So, in this video, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Femi Fandana, explained in details on how to buy gun, on how to license gun, and have gun in your possession, because that is where Nigeria is heading to. Because if the government cannot defend you, you ought to defend yourself, and the law permits you to defend yourself. In this video, Femi Fandana explained even the condition that you can even use AK-47, condition that you can use to defend yourself. These are legal conditions. He didn't say you should do it out of the law. So the previous video I did, I was unable to explain so many things because as you know, I am not a lawyer, I'm just a blogger. So I pass information, but when it comes to the legal aspect of that information, my knowledge is limited to it because that is not what I was trained to do. So in this video, you have to listen attentively and understand on how you can buy con, license it and have it in your possession because you don't know who is next. You don't know when and how it is going to happen. We pray for protection, but people that are dying are also humans. So take your time and watch this video to the end. We have to discuss the right and then proceed to examine the property. In the first place, it is not correct to say that Nigerians have no right to bear arms. Apart from the fact that the penal code applicable in the north and the criminal code applicable in the south recognize the right to self-defense. In other words, if somebody aims a gun at me and I can quickly grab another gun, I have the right to shoot. Just to be clear, you're saying the law permits Nigerians to bear guns? Yep. But you are required to apply for the license. But I'll come to that in a moment. I'm just talking of right to self-defense. It's also guaranteed by the Constitution. All I'm required to do is that I must not use a force that is not proportional to the threat. In other words, if you are going to hit me with a cane, I cannot go for a gun. That will not be proportional. So the proportionality is the issue. This, uh, under Section 33 of the Constitution, which guarantees the right to life, the right to life is sacrosanct. But there are exceptions. Section 33, subsection 2 provides that somebody will not be said to have lost his right to life under the constitution if he loses his life because some force was applied while he or she is trying to kill another person or to steal my property but you know it's a capitalist society the right to property is also sacrosanct so in other words somebody can lose his life if he's trying to kill another citizen or trying to remove the property of another citizen, somebody can deploy some force. But the force must be reasonable. Uh, uh, it's, you, you, you've, you've got me confused here, Mr. No, 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 no. We're coming there. But so, first of all, you talked about the fact that Nigerians can bear arms according to the law. Yeah, under the Firearms Act, Good. you are required to apply for a license Good. to bear arms. Okay, we'll come in there. Now, you also said that the force both ways must be proportional. Yes. How do I know the kind of proportion the other fellow was bringing my way? For no, me to know the kind of you proportion? You have to look at the circumstances. For instance, if a gang of armed robbers took 
walk over your house. Whatever force you can muster, the law allows you to deploy it. any force you can muster. Could have already surrounded your house. Whether you have a license or not, and you can lay hands on a gun, you can shoot and kill them. According, you won't be, you won't, according to the law. Yes, you won't be charged with murder. So will the Even if you are charged with murder, you will plead self-defense. So in the how did I get the gun in the first place? But, oh, that's, that's another matter. That's another matter. One, the law says, I can defend myself by deploying force that is reasonable or proportional. I can grab it from anybody. But if you now want to I'm, I'm, I'm reacting to what the, the chief of army staff said, I am saying in Nigeria, if you meet certain conditionalities, you can apply for a license to bear arms. We'll come to the applying for the license in the first place. But what I understood before now is that there are certain there is a limit to the kind of firearms that a nigerian for sure. an average nigerian can for sure okay so for sure speak to that because some listen people listening to you right now for, can, for I, instance, can I just make a call to someone in germany and say i need an ak-47 in my no, house no 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 no, get no. A, you, a, a license you must, for it. you must have a license which is why on a regular basis when the government uh uh uh, uh discovers that Many people have acquired weapons in the country. You are then told to report to the commissioner of police in that state, either to renew your license or to validate your license. Because if you have no licenses and you have weapons, you have committed an offense under the Firearms Act. So you must, have, you must apply for a license. Where a problem may arise is where you now say, sorry, I can give, you've given license to Mr. A to bear arm. You now deny it to Mr. B, who meets the conditions. Of course, you can challenge that in court. Before or after I've been killed by a firearm that I did not? No, for denier, the denier. Okay. The denier can be challenged. Uh, let's take, stick, stick with this for a little while longer, Mr. Falano. You said that a Nigerian has a right to defend himself. Yes, sir, under the with, criminal code under and the, the penal criminal code, code and, penal, penal and the code constitution. With any gun available. Yes. Is that what you just said? Oh, yes. So even if it's a point forty five or an AK-47, I can defend myself. If the man myself. is trying to shoot me with AK-47 and I can lay hands on AK-47, I have the right to shoot. To him and kill him before he kills me. That's the law. OK. Um, but what is not permitted? OK. In any society, is unregulated licensing of bearing arms, which is what is the it's a major problem in the United States today. That even mad men and women can acquire guns and start killing people, shooting children in school. But how do we know who has a right to it? You said every Nigerian does have a right to it. Now, how do how does the law? Uh, coin it that to say okay this category of person cannot have a for instance, the law is saying if you have been convicted in the last five years for you know uh certain offenses you will not be allowed if you are a person of um intemperate habits you will not be given a license if you're under 17 you'll not be given a license and so on and so forth so but if you meet the conditions and you are said to be responsible he may be given a license, but they won't give. I, I was talking to a police officer one day, a senior police officer. Man, I, I'm trying to acquire a license. I have a lot of threats to my life. He said, no, they won't give you. I said, why? <laughs> he said, because the, the government will believe that you may just fire, you know. Uh, a, a government official won't. I said, no, 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 no. You know, so, but the government will have to find out, I mean, of course, the person must not be a person of unsound mind. It's, it's in the law. Right. It, how, how? To say, oh, Nigerians have no right to bear arms is not correct. So what Nigerians who meet certain conditions mm. can bear arms. Mm. But what is ideal, what is important, we shall brought this argument. And if I understand the position of the chief of our minister, 
I think he's opposed to unregulated license. But for them to discourage Nigerians from applying for licenses or from acquiring weapons illegally is to have a collective approach. How about to his? To defend our people. Okay. Every citizen is entitled to his or her right to life. And I have gone to court where a man was killed in, I think, in 2011 in Kaduna, right? During a riot. The, the widow came crying. I said, no, madam, we'll go to court for you. And we approached the court. And the court awarded damages in our favor on the ground that the government that should have prevented the riot failed in its duty. It, 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 it I, let... I also have I done a case against Ghana where a 15 year old Nigerian boy um, went to swim. No, he didn't swim, he didn't know how to swim, but the teacher made him to swim and he got drowned. We approached the echo was caught. The court awarded a colossal sum of $250,000 in favor of the parents. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. But so if... the government has a duty. Mm. to defend the right, the right to life of every citizen. We are the government fairs. You are simply asking citizens to take care of themselves. Mm. But now, Which is a dangerous situation. Which is what the chief of army staff is also saying. It's a call to anarchy if we have to go on the, the tangent of getting everyone to bear arms. No, but they give arms to certain people. It's a class matter. They give guns to the rich to protect themselves and their properties. But as far as the law is concerned, what properties has a poor man got a, a worker who is on 30,000 a month, even if the money is paid? But for the rich, the bourgeoisie, your life is so, is so valued by the state. So you are given a license to bear arms. You are said to have met the conditions. But what is important, uh, even, if, even if you give the license to everybody, not every Nigerian can raise the money to acquire weapons. So, therefore, we must compel the government, mm. compel the government to provide for the security of every citizen. It's so stated in the Constitution. Mm. The security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Section 14. Let, let's, explore, let's explore that last point you just made now, you, when you talk about the bourgeoisie being uh, empowered. Empire, yes. Now, a good number of people might say somewhere in their heads that, okay, maybe Mr. Fallon is actually pointing in the way in a particular direction, that politicians or the political class who wants to get these things done by every means can empower some of their cronies and, you know, give them arms, they get do their it. licenses for them. They do it. They do it. The Constitution... What do they do? The Constitution has abolished thuggery, vangas, and so on and so forth. We are politicians and young people. But you hear all the time, you read all the time, that thugs have been arrested with weapons. Where have they been tried? Nowhere. Nowhere. So, the volume of weapons in the country will have to be blamed. The political class will have to be blamed for it. Now, what, what has the Senate done now? They summoned the NSA and the uh, service chiefs to do what? To discuss problems that you know about. In those areas, in those two local governments in Plateau, where this unfortunate incident occurred, you have police stations, you have the offices of the state security service. You do, don't you know SSS officials are in every local government? So what happened? What happened? They are not equipped. They are not empowered to stop violence. They are not empowered. They are not equipped to gather intelligence. So I'm going to challenge the National Assembly, the scene. It's not enough to summon service chiefs. After the meeting, can we decide as a people that we want to empower the police in our country to police the society, hmm. 
No, you can't imagine. The 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 budget of the of the National Assembly was 173 billion naira. It had been raised to 344 billion naira. And the president signed the budget into law two days ago. Can you say such a country cannot equip the police if it is committed to do so? Just, just a quick thing about the communities in Plateau State that you mentioned. Yes. The, the, the governor of the state said, you know, the same thing about some um, s about 64 communities or thereabouts uh, being occupied, you know, by non-state actors, or so to speak. And uh, he's, and a number of people, and you also heard him when, you know, before the comment that, you know, when we came live, talking about the fact that he didn't accuse the previous government of not have, having a political will, but he's asking for this government to muster the political will to do the needful by the people in those communities. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when, when you hear that kind of rhetoric, the question in my mind is, Mr. Falano, what do we need the political will for when the constitution and the law is clear about what the security agencies need to do? No, I am saying the security agencies are not equipped. Is that the political will? Yes. If the political will is mustered today, we can stop this illegal, unlawful killing. Could you please define political will? Because I seem, I don't know. All speak. right. I have just given you an instance whereby the president sent a budget to the National Assembly. For legislators, federal legislators, your budget will be 170 billion. On their own, they raised it to 344 billion naira. And that has become the law. The same National Assembly, the same government, the president and the National Assembly can have a special session tomorrow to say we are going to equip the police in Nigeria. So we are going to make provision for the police to acquire weapons, to acquire vehicles, to uh, 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 make gadgets available in their offices, and to train them to stop unlawful killings in Nigeria. But nobody is addressing that. All we have been told, oh, uh, NSA uh, and uh, service chiefs come. What happened? Mm. They will be giving the explanation, right? And that is the end of the matter. We are waiting for the next one. In the last 10 years, or rather in the last 24 years, you have had more than 20 incidents in Plateau State, in Benue State, in many other states in the country. Okay. Well, Mr. Fallon, there are so, so many other issues to raise on that one, but my colleagues yes. also would like to comment on this. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Fallon. So we've got uh, two questions which we'd like to ask you back to back, so you just respond to both of them at the same time, if you can. So the first is that, now, for the people of Plateau State who may be listening to you right now, uh, what would you advise the governor to do? Should he, I know we've talked about this in the past, in history, should he just go ahead, apply for mass license for certain people to acquire those guns that are allowed by law and give to the people? That's number one okay. question. And the second one... Uh, yeah, the second one has to do with the Firearms Act. I mean, it was um, first 1959. The threat to life has sort of evolved, but the law guarding the use or ownership of these arms has not evolved in any way. Would you be looking to um, recommend something as regards amendment of that act? Well, number one, uh, on uh, Plateau State, I, I can say that I was rather flabbergasted that the governor of the state or the federal government never declare curfew, never impose curfew on that state, at least to stop the nocturnal killings. Number two, nobody has challenged the police and the state security service. What happened? Did you sleep? What happened? Again, you have to talk of failure of intelligence. Three, this has become a recurring matter in that state. So what was done in the past? The federal government has set up Judicial Commissions of Inquiry. The state has set up Judicial Commissions of Inquiry. So what happened? 
what happened with the reports, the recommendations, they were never implemented. Those who were arrested in the past, why were they not prosecuted? And I have read some of the accounts where some of the victims who survived said, I know the person that attacked me. So has the government gone to such people to make arrests? No arrests have been made. And once you have impunity, there's no way you are going to stop illegal killings. And of course, the major problem that is not being addressed by the political class, by the governor of the state, by the federal government and all of them, is the refusal of the government, federal and state, to establish ranches for uh, uh, herders, herdsmen. The government had agreed that the best way to stop uh, uh, herders invading farms and killing people is to have ranches. You have a place where you cut at them and their animals. You have grass planted, water will be available, there will be schools for their children. That is the model in the entire African continent. We have less than 20 million heads of cattle in Nigeria. Ethiopia has over 70 million heads of cattle. Botswana, there was a time, I think 2013 or 2014, where the cow population, cattle population in Botswana was higher than the population of Botswanese citizens. How do these countries, African countries, how do they address this problem? It is by having ranches. Now, the last government, the Buhari regime, initially said, I think the Minister of Agriculture then, Audo Ogbe said, oh, we have acquired 55,000 hectares of land for ranches. At the end of the day, he jumped to be talking of cattle colony, and so on and so forth. But before General, um, General Buhari left, before President Buhari left, he made available, and I brought this out, he made available 6.2 mil billion naira to, to, to build ranches in Katsina. Katsina alone! And I challenge other state government on the question of equality of states to demand for the same amount to have ranches in their state. On, but nobody followed it up. On uh, Firearms Act, Chamberlain, very interestingly, the late uh, uh, Governor Aketi, Akeredolu, uh, wrote me Akeredolu, we call him Aketi, had actually briefed me to challenge the refusal of the government to approve licenses for the Amoteco operatives in Ondo State to bear arms. And I asked him, do a letter to them. Let us have the refusal in writing so that we could go to court. Unfortunately, uh, the process was on uh, when he took ill. Okay. But what is important, that law is still okay. It's still okay. You need the Firearms Act in the country. It doesn't need any any amendment what is required the law should be there okay. when it is important the government may occasionally grant licenses but for the generality of the people the government will have to equip the police to this work okay. we have to withdraw fifty thousand soldiers that are doing police work okay. to do their own work well, Mr. Mr. Well, that is the only way. very very though it was a long video but thank you for watching to the end for me, this video has expanded my knowledge about the, you know, fire bearing acts. I never knew that such defense um, mechanism exists under the ambit of the law, the law of self-defense that if, for example, an armed robber even come to your house carrying AK-47, that you yourself can also use AK-47 to confront him. So I never knew that such law exists. But with this video, I really understand what the law says now. Thank you for having time to listen to this video. Please, the only way you can support me is to subscribe to this channel, share this video, and always come by for the day of this. Thank you.